It's fine. It's all starting to gel now. Help, we're trapped in an aspect. Oh, see, that one? Okay. One moment. Well, I deal with broken captions. We have to line up marbles, and it's very hard to get marbles in a row. Are things going to gel now? I think the answer is no. Of course the answer is no. Work, dang it. All right, I'm gonna let you do the intro while I work on that. What intro? What are we doing? Hello! Welcome to Archival Adventures, everyone! Thank you for your patience. Uh, slight tech issue. I'm trying to get the captions working properly on the VTUL Studios channel. So my guest this week is Archivist Kira, and she is going to... Um, what am I going to do? Introduce you all to the stream. Yay! Um, uh, in just a moment. Um, it's our cool adventures. Once a week, share things from special collections and university archives here at Virginia Tech. Uh, and so uh, I'm gonna let you do the land and labor acknowledgement and then talk about what we're gonna share while I fix the captions. Okay, <laughs> I can do that. I'm being thrown into hosting duties. It's like an award show. Um, yes, so I will do that. That's what I'll do. <laughs> um, so, uh, Virginia Tech acknowledges that we live and work in the Tutelo Monacan people's homeland, and we recognize their continued relationship with their lands and waterways. We further acknowledge that the Morrell Land Grant College Act, 1862, enabled the Commonwealth of Virginia to finance and found Virginia Tech through the forced removal of Native nations from their lands in Western territories. We understand that honoring Native peoples without explicit material commitments falls short of our institutional responsibilities. Through sustained, transparent, and meaningful engagement with the Tutelo and Monacan peoples and other Native nations, we commit to changing the trajectory of Virginia Tech's history by increasing Indigenous staff, students, and faculty recruitment and retention, diversifying course offerings, and meeting the growing needs of all Virginia tribes and supporting their sovereignty. I'm gonna pause for your tech check working over there. <laughs> uh, not quite yet, but go okay. ahead. Um, in I'm addition... Getting I'm getting closer. <laughs> that's fine. In addition, Virginia Tech acknowledges that its Blacksburg campus sits partly on land that was previously the site of Smithfield and Solitude Plantation, owned by members of the Preston family. Between the 1770s and the 1860s, the Prestons and other local white families that owned parcels of what became Virginia Tech also owned hundreds of enslaved people. We acknowledge that enslaved Black people generated the wealth that financed the predecessor institution to Virginia Tech, the Preston and Olin Institute, and they also worked on construction of its building. Not until 1953, however, was the first Black student permitted to enroll. Through inclusive VT, the institutional and individual commitment to UPROSUM that I may serve in the spirit of community and diversity and excellence, we commit to advancing a more diverse, equitable, and inclusive community. I didn't know I was going to have a reading assignment today. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got um, captions. captions, possibly. Everywhere. So, um, we do. I didn't want to turn my head and look over there. I was afraid I would throw things off. Hey, everybody, we're going to talk about gelatin again. Yay! Um, if you joined us back in May, way back at the end of spring semester, uh, I came and talked about gelatin. Specifically, we talked about a lot of jello. Lots but, of jello. But I said we were going to talk again because there's a lot. We only talked about jello from like the 1890s up through the 1930s. Um, so today we're going to pick up where we left off and kind of go from the 1940s through the mid 20th century and into the late 20th century uh, when Jello gets a whole lot of Technicolor, well, Gelatin gets a whole lot of Technicolor and a whole lot of uh, Jiggly, as has been pointed out in chat. Um, <laughs> yes, very all mods. However, I am not modding today because I am a guest. I have no way to mod. I will let the other mods There's mod. 
Sometimes mods got a mod, sometimes they got a guest. Yeah. It's the mod squad. It's the mod squad. Um, there's always room. Jello. For another gelatin oh, yeah, stream. Yes, I don't know if we can say that. That might not be right. There's always room for another gelatin stream. <laughs> there's always room for Archivist Kira to join me. Yay. Um, so, I don't know. Yeah. We did have some chair pushing before, so maybe. <laughs> uh, technical issues, because there's always technical issues, especially when I have a guest. It's fun. Someday. I'll be able to just. There are so things. many points but we have to award this weekend. Let me uh, let me see who else here. Key squared. Hi. And Lord Portico. Welcome, welcome. Blue Rooster. It's good to see you. Um. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Make sure I haven't lost any of my marbles. Wait, I had marbles. Um. And <laughs> Matt, it's great to see you. I love I love the gummy bear emote. I have no idea where it's from, but I love it. Um, <laughs> and let's see, let's see, let's see. Sterling! <laughs> it's work mom and work dad. <laughs> I finished, I have pictures for you of, um, of your exhibit, although I'll have better ones later, but it's in place. Uh, <laughs> That's also part of why this was late, because I went down to the wire getting everything done there. Um, okay, and Hannah. Hi, Hannah. Um, if you want to keep track of who needs points, please do. Um, eventually, the points system will be on a thing that is accessible on computers that are not my computer at home. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, so um, also there is this behind us, um, this list. I will say about this list, this was the total list for both episodes. So some of these materials have been refiled. If there's something you want to um, see, do feel free to ask. But if I don't have it readily available, yeah, I apologize. I did, we may have looked at some of it last time around. I did delete anything that was exclusively before 1940 yeah. from the list. Um, because our focus this time is 1940 and after, but um, that's all the updating I did. So we'll see. It's always <laughs> a guess. Um, you're lying, Sterling. You did work on this one, um, but only because you did the first gelatin one. It's fine. And I know what next week is, but I, nothing is prepped for it because I haven't had time yet. <laughs> um anyway how about we're gonna look at a lot of pamphlets and then we're gonna look at some books i've kind of got things vaguely chronologically but not entirely because once we get into folders it should it gets be interesting. less disgusting mm, that would not be true at all my friend well <laughs> because the time period we're gonna look at people go to the store and buy powdered gelatin rather than rendering it at home. I mean, yes, that much is true. <laughs> um, but then when they started, what they did with it, hmm, gets very interesting. <laughs> oh, we did switch. I was like, where did we go? Which so screen are we on? Where, where, where are we? Where am I? And we um, can... So we're going to, we're going to talk about Jello by not talking about Jello. We're going to talk about gelatin. Uh, more specifically, we're going to start with a pamphlet from Knox Gelatin Knox. Company. So Knox was a competitor for Jello. I Knox mean, is still around. Knox is still around. Jello is still around. A couple other like, companies might be around. But anyway. When I was in high school, we used Knox gelatin uh, to slick back our hair for the stage productions of mm -hmm. 1940s era shows. Still used by synchronized swimmers, as I understand it, mm -hmm. for that same purpose. Um, can't really tell. There's actually like, br oh, there we go. There's some bright yellow going on here if I give a little shade. Um, you can adjust, oh. like hit the power button and just turn that one off. And, there we go. Uh -huh. Everyone has to see the terrifying yellow <laughs> color of the gel cookery uh, recipe book. Gel cookery. So this pamphlet is about using Knox unflavored gelatin. So that's a fun thing we haven't really touched on. When we talked last time, we talked about flavored gelatin and all of the flavors that the Jell-O company produced and some other companies produce. Knox was often really focused on making an unflavored gelatin that you could flavor accordingly, depending on what you were doing with it. Um... <laughs> Aquanet. 
So I love that this has like a little picture with our little description of what everything is on the front cover. So if you want to recreate something delightful you've seen, uh, you can That's do that. That's actually great. I wish more pe more places would do that today. Um, and so as we discovered last time, uh, gelatin can be used in all kinds of ways. We can mold it in things. We can whip it with other ingredients. We can make it into weird little rice flake type like m things yeah we'll talk more about I'm that. curious yes um, does it say where this was published or what audience it was published for well this is just from the company the Knox Shelton company in 1959 there's a date in here Johnstown New York Johnstown New York yes but they spelled gelatin the British way they did and they <laughs> I don't know why they did but they did and they do that for a long time um, my shadows of life welcome back for a five stream streak uh, so who doesn't want to start with uh, Jello Salad? Jello Salad, and and is we won't it, spend too much on this one because this one's mostly black and white. Doesn't have it, a lot of pictures. Is it a salad? Also, that has olives on it, green yes. olives on it. It does have olives on it, and tomatoes. Um, <laughs> I I can't even barbecued vegetable aspic. Uh, yeah. What is? What does it mean by barbecue? So we're going to... Are they in gonna, barbecue sauce? We're, sort of. It's kind of a make your own deal. So as you can see, we're going to take our unflavored gelatin. We're going to mix it with some cold water because you want to like soften it up, soften it up to use. And then we're going to combine two eight ounce cans of tomato sauce, one teaspoon of prepared mustard, one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoon of minced onion, one and a half tablespoons of vinegar, two teaspoons of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and I think an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. We don't want it to be too spicy. Um, so basically we're making barbecue sauce. It has two two teaspoons of sugar. I suppose that will help the medicine go down. Yeah, um. uh, so you're gonna make your own barbecue sauce, which you're then gonna put the gelatin into. Savory barbecue veggie aspect might not actually be terrible. I This is true, I don't know. I've only ever had a meat aspect, like a, I think it was duck in aspect and so when we pulled duck in duck fat flavored gelatin was not appealing to me. When we get to the actual <laughs> book that I'm going to talk about later, I will tell you my barbecue jello salad cube story for all of our viewers. Who have, you may have heard the story, but our chat may not have. So um, I will respectfully disagree with Puddle Glum that this might not actually be <laughs> terrible because I've tasted, I've made and tasted something similar, but we'll come back to that. It's a it's a taste with texture issue when it comes but to aspect. then we're putting cooked vegetables in, so those are going to be soft. Mushy. Mushy. Which would be like it, uh, the like jello. This is where it gets me though. Lightly sprinkle the bottom of six individual molds with grated Parmesan cheese. Okay. And then put the gelatin mixture in, and then you set it. Mm-hmm. And then you serve it on, oh, on the, salad. The cream. Parmesan cheese adds some saltiness, adds cheese, and what doesn't need cheese. But also, wouldn't that be like coating the mold in flour so that yes. it comes out easier? That's partially gonna. It might help with that. <laughs> um, we also have some fruit pat salads. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It was like the fruit salad where you get like. Uh, cubes of pear inside yes. lime jello. And we'll we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll find some of the Technicolor delights. So like I said, I won't spend too much time on this one because it's not, not as many pictures, which is part of the fun of uh, me coming on stream and sharing the Technicolor joys of gelatin. We do have some jellied cream of chicken, if anybody's interested. Um, some shrimp chili mold. <laughs> what? So yeah, gelatin, sugar, salt. A little bit of pepper again very little bit because you know uh we're gonna melt our gelatin in hot water makes sense that's what we do then we add lemon juice and chili sauce which given the time period on this um 1959 i would assume that could either mean a chili sauce you've made at home and perhaps canned or preserved or a store-bought one um <laughs> so you're gonna mix all that in you put in some cooked or canned shrimp not well, I mean, canned shrimp is cooked yeah. already, but it was yeah. a weird way to think about it. And pickle relish, why not? Um, and then you can put that in a big mold. You want to make a big one for a lot of people. So 
a festive, or you can do individual. Out ones. of curiosity, so in my brain, pickle relish is always sweet pickle relish, but it, at this period in time, would that have always been the case? Yes, almost okay. always. Um, it probably, I don't think dill pickle relish came around until later, and I think it would specify. This might, oh, and again, because of the time period on this, and you could also assume they might have meant a homemade pickle relish rather mm -hmm. than a store bought. So that would just be however you chose to flavor the pickle relish or chow chow or it was similar just, condiment that you made out. Uh, it was just in my head pickle yeah, relish. Okay. Relish is always the sweet. I'm gonna I'm gonna look pickle. for uh some well there's not a lot of pictures. Okay, we're gonna have go spaghetti -o Vienna, Vienna sausage. Vienna sausage. <laughs> this one does not, so I'm gonna I'm gonna skip ahead to a different one. And we're gonna do another we'll look at another knock. I may one. be getting ahead of things, but I've watched too many videos about how to make soup dumplings and to get the soup filling into the cold uncooked dumplings. One way to do it is to put a few sheets of gelatin into the broth to make it solidify, to make it easier to work with. It then mm -hmm. all liquefies when you steam the dumplings to cook them. Yeah, uh, that would make a lot of sense. I, I could see putting the gelatin in so that it solidifies, possibly even freezing it mm -hmm. um, while you're putting the dumpling together. And then, yeah, when you heat it up, it would li liquefy. Also, yes, canned shrimp was and remains a thing. You can still buy canned shrimp today, but it became a very popular ingredient in the mid-century, mid-20th century, which is what we're going to look at a lot of today. <laughs> so you will see a lot of canned shrimp, canned salmon, canned fish of many kinds being um, integrated into gelatin molds in the mid-century. I just realized that our... No, go what? ahead. Oh. No, I just realized that our cameras are on the wrong sides. That's okay. fine. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to uh, fix it while you well, talk. Well, I'll talk. So we're going to look at another Doc's gelatin pamphlet from around the same era. This is 1961. So now we have mm -hmm. entered what I love to call the Technicolor dream. So much yellow and so much orange or um, red, and it's just going to get better. Um, so once again, they give us a little bit of a how-to. All of these pamphlets were designed to help you use this ingredient, because how else are they going to profit from it if you're not buying and using it? Uh, so you have these processes and different ways you can prepare things. Um, so, yeah. As a housewife, because of course that was the target audience was housewife. Um, Think how amazing you are when you show up to a dinner party with this. Uh, and we'll see some the, of that later. The question is, as a housewife, looking at this, one would probably assume this is what the color should be when it is finished. Yes. Was this color possible without adding food coloring? In some cases, yes. Um, if you've seen bottled tomato juice, you can get that color. If you put tomato juice and gelatin, that's what you're going to get. Um, some of these, it depends. Like the This is made with orange juice, and I know it looks a little more yellow because it would have... Um, this is something that you would have like... Um, orange skin. It had egg white in it in this case, and in this one, it's also orange juice, but the reason it looks kind of yellow is it's, or that's pineapple, but it has like, it's whipped mixture in that case, so there's a lot of air going in it at effect, so it's not, it, it's going to be close to the color of pineapple juice, but there might be other things. Hold on, congratulations on being randomly selected as a so, VIP for the stream. Here we have <laughs> some delightful molds, uh, both in shape and color and ingredients. We have a green salad mold. Mm. But look, only 29 calories per serving. So the reason I, I start to bring this up is Knox Gelatin had a really interesting campaign in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. We're going to see a few more examples where they basically touted themselves as a diet and beauty food. Um, so the fact that they're giving us calorie listings in here, oh, look at this aspect that you could bake for a party and mm -hmm. it's only this much or it's only this much. Well, this is 1950s? This is 61. 61, okay. I was, because we don't see the calorie counts on things yeah. um, earlier in the century. So we have some strictly savory things. Um, we have some savory and sweet-ish, more sour or tart uh, with a grapefruit ginger salad. And again, all of these are unflavored. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, just, I did. I had heard that. No, That's it, a good fun it fact. me and just thinking of where gelatin comes from and, and the circle of Yes, gelatin being um, used. Puddle Glam uh, mentioned in chat for anybody who is on the other channel or can't see the chat because you're watching like the VOD or something. Um, also to improbably tie together Jello and Technicolor, in the movie The Wizard of Oz, the horses of a different color were white 
colors, covered in different flavored jello powders. The biggest issue they ran into with this is that the horses would lick the powder off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, think about that for but, a while. But just thinking about like kids' gelatin comes from things like horses' hooves. Mostly cows, but yes. But but yes, like hooves. Uh, this one, so. this cranberry souffle salad, which you could delightfully serve at a holiday meal, has mayonnaise and cranberries. It's gelatin, okay. sugar, salt, water, mayonnaise, lemon juice, lemon rind, cranberry sauce, canned cranberry sauce, big old canned cranberry sauce, orange or apple, peeled and diced, or pineapple, so some sort mm -hmm. of other fruit, and some walnuts. Um, I get it. I think if I was making that today, I would probably, if I if I was coming up with that from scratch today, I would probably lean more towards like a a whipped cream, and, a whipped topping, and also than mayonnaise. In the center here is is lettuce leaves and a pile mm -hmm. of mayonnaise. Of course, it's not just lettuce leaves; that is a pile of mayonnaise. But yeah, like for I don't know, because I think of cranberry as more of a leaning towards dessert because mm -hmm. it's fruit but it's definitely a side that goes with savory so i could see the pairing with mayonnaise yeah uh but my brain wants that to be made with like cool whip instead <laughs> well and then we start there's so by the this period of time we start to see recipes recurring over and over again whether it's with Knox or jello Jello company or both. So perfection salad is one that's been around, I think, since at least the 30s. Um, and this is if you, if you, I think the Jello version uses lemon gelatin because they didn't. Jello Corporation did not have an unflavored gelatin; mm -hmm. it only had flavored Jello. Uh, but well, basically, this one has lemon juice. It does it. have lemon juice and vinegar and cabbage and celery and pimento and, and pimento. <laughs> also, I know. I, I guess you you can just buy pimento. Yes, you can just buy pimento. I've never thought about that because pimento is just always, it, it's either, like, I only ever encounter pimento in olives. So mm -hmm. it never occurred to me. You can just buy pimento. You can just buy pimento. Uh, here are your delightful main dish salad molded things that usually have some sort of dressing or, so the cottage cheese and kidney bean salad, for example, has French. Why did they call it perfection? Why did they call it perfection? I don't know. Was it for the same reason that the town was called perfection in the movie Tremors? I don't think so. But that's a really <laughs> good question, Hannah. I never. I should have thought to look that up, and I'll have to. I, I'll have to. I like, will investigate. Invest. We'll have to investigate that. Um, so these all have like a mayonnaise or um, some sort of other heavy cream or milk or dressing to give them that like creamy texture. Um, and the cottage cheese and kidney bean one is slightly horrifying, mm -hmm. but also looks... It also has cottage. Yeah, cottage cheese. It looks like it's a mushroom soup one. Um, but yes, shadows. And we also have the delightful tuna. tuna mold, so we can take our canned fish. And this was meant, like, in the 30s in particular, which we talked about a little bit, this gelatin was great for stretching meals. It was cheap and an inexpensive ingredient to do a lot with. Um, and some of that mentality carries through to the mid-century, which is how we get into some of these things. Um, Interesting. Okay. Okay. We have there, an answer. It, it's even just easily findable in um, the Wikipedia entry for Jello Salad. One of the earliest examples of Jello salad is Perfection Salad, developed by Mrs. John E. Cook of Newcastle, Pennsylvania in 1904. I wonder what her actual name is. Um, <clears throat> the original salad called for chopped cabbage, celery, and red peppers in a plain aspic mold. Mm -hmm. Perfection Salad won third prize in a Better Homes and Gardens recipe contest and popularized the concept of the Jello salad in the United States. So, but it still that's the tell history. Us. It doesn't tell us the name, nope. but I will I will continue looking. But that gives us yeah where it started. 
Um, so we have a couple of desserts in here, which may be how we more traditionally think of serving gelatin. Uh, I promise there's no tuna in the pineapple whip or anything like that. Pineapple coconut delight sounds amazing. Um, we also have like chiffon cakes and pies, which was a, a, you know, sort of nice way to, but as I mentioned in the like forties and fifties, uh, Knox in particular started touting their food as like a basically in with some ways like a beauty product. So you'll see this, this ad or some version of this ad repeated again, like you could drink Knox so many ways. Um, just pick your favorite drink and stir in Knox gelatin. Brittle fingernails? Correct them. The one way published medical research proved effective. This is not a medical history podcast. Do not take advice from us. But you could drink one envelope of Knox gelatin each day in fruit or vegetable juice, bouillon, or water. And they have apparently clinical studies that indicated this was a great way to help with brittle nails. Um, I think there actually is evidence that gelatin helps with that, but again... Not an expert in that. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, I, causality, I think, would be yeah. difficult to prove. But. So he talks about in these other booklets, the Knox on-camera gel recipes. We actually have a copy of that here in our collection. It is wild. Um, and then we have the Knox Eat and Reduce plan, which I actually have in another folder off to the side of me. So this is where they actually start touting it as like a diet food, basically, because the concept was if you put a... a um, packet of gelatin into something that you wanted to and you drank it like half an hour before a meal it would make you feel more full so that was the like you could put it in just about anything and that was what they were they would tell you so um let's see one last one i want to look at just because it for Knox, and then we'll move on to some other things for a little bit try and move this up a little bit but this one is uh it's dessert time so primarily a dessert focus Oh, this one is a gel one. I can't remember. Sometimes I have a lot of the same things in the folder. So this one is working with a combination of things. So we have Jello, and by this point, we're in the 50s, and we have seven flavors of gelatin. And I want to point out, we have strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime, which have been around for a while. Mm -hmm. And more interestingly, apple. Apple. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. What did you find? Um, I found um, an article... <laughs> From the Topanga News Times, or Tep Topanga New Times, uh, written by uh, Bonnie Morgan, who found a slightly different history for perfection salad than what Wikipedia had. Mm. Um, not at all surprised. Um, but she found uh, a reference to it in the, a 1972 James Beard book American Cookery where he relates it as historic salad which has become a standard in American cuisine won third prize in a contest sponsored by Charles Knox mm -hmm. in 1905. Fanny Farmer was one of the judges uh, and the winner Mrs. John E. Cook of Newcastle, Pennsylvania was rewarded with a $100 sewing machine and enduring gastronomic fame. Uh, still doesn't tell us why it's called perfection salad but this coming from James Beard as the source and actually pointing to 1905 and a Knox gelatin contest mm -hmm. rather than a Better Homes and Gardens contest in 1904. I don't know, seems more plausible to me, but uh, I'm still I'm still poking around to try and find out why it's called perfection. Okay, I'm gonna switch to another folder because I have all kinds of stuff and I wanna make sure we get to at least a few things. Um, also, okay. Blue Dan. Um, thank you for the subscription. Resubscription. There it is. I was like, the bot said thank you, but it hadn't shown up yet. 23 months. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the one we were just looking at the advertisement for, and this is the actual pamphlet. Do you really, Do you really want, want to, want lose, to weight? lose weight? Here's the Knox Eat and Reduce plan. And we won't go through all of this again, but this was a whole plan. Um, this was from 1962. <laughs> from the Knox Gelatin Company. That includes the, we don't give medical advice, right? No, that's, no. Um, I think, medical <laughs> medical terms or medical history. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'll okay. find it. Um, uh, so it's really interesting how they talk about this because it, like, they talk about it as, oh, there's no drugs, there's no calorie counting, there's no starvation um, in terms of using this as a medical. diet food. Um, so. This is basically more narrative. This is like a, a lovely little read about how all this is going to help you. Um, 
get to. Um, and they kind of help you. They yeah. say there's no calorie counting, and then they like tell you exactly how to do that. Uh, fun fact: sometimes when you get to work with used materials, uh, you find marginalia. So somebody must have intended to use this at some point because they put a star in there. Well, I mean, not a. It gives you the formula for figuring out your calories. Yeah. Um, um, and here's another one I want to double, and then we'll move away from this angle. But this one is, I think, from around the same era. It doesn't have a date on it. Um, but this one is uh, Delicious Dishes for Dieters. So again, um, recipes for somehow... Uh, and this includes, though, a low-calorie cheesecake. Mmm, cheesecake. Um, but also molded salads with cabbage and celery. <laughs> Um, interestingly, we have a version of Perfection Salad in here that includes um, non-nutritive sweetener, which would have been um, an earlier version of something like Sweet and Low. So an alternative to sugar that was not made with sugar. Um, in this time period, there were a lot of different ones with different names that don't exist anymore. Um, so they were just saying use some sort of non-sugar usually chemical alternative <laughs> but again we have our, our vinegar our lemon juice and our cabbage and celery and pimentos um sorry i just saw a picture of mm -hmm. uh of perfection salad and i've had it before yeah. um. <laughs> oh i'm sorry <laughs> i still can't find a reason for the name um it might not be documented because we don't even know mrs john cook What's her name? John Cook. This is Johnny Cook. Yes. Yeah, we don't even know her actual first name. So it's entirely possible that the reason uh, that she named her salad perfection was never documented. Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm not I'm not finding that very easily here. If anybody else finds it and you want to share, please do. Or if anybody knows and you're like watching the VOD. Um, you know, comment below and let us know. Uh, here we've got some more fun things we can do with gelatin. We can make <clears throat> lovely trifled layers of things. Um, we can make this, which looks like it might be some sort of alien pod. Um, I'm just looking at the, the, this is not an eraser taken to it. Uh, no, it's shredded coconut. Right. It's, it's actual shredded coconut. It's just the way the camera is capturing it. It, it looks like somebody had like taken a white marker yes. or something on it. Um, anyway, dessert. Dessert. The uh, best. Yeah. Okay, the uh, General Foods. Yes, General Foods eventually bought out the Jell-O Corporation. So eventually we hit a point where materials in our collections for Jell-O might be under Jell-O, they might be under General Foods, they might be under Jell-O Corporation, they might be under a lot of things. So eventually they became, so we um, actually have, yeah. But General Foods today is, is still General Foods. Okay. They are a very large conglomerate today. I forgot how much they entail, but they still manage the, they have a Jello division of General Foods now. Let's see. They have Burger King. They there. have Burger King. Uh, predecessor was Postum. Yeah, and that can get us into a whole other can of worms because that has ties to Battle Creek, Michigan. And uh, the... It was merged into Kraft. Yes. Um, so it became part of Kraft. But they also owned and acquired companies like Jell-O, Walter Baker and Company, which was infamous for chocolate products in the 19th, 18th, and 19th century. Maxwell House Coffee um, and some other brands. Yeah. No, that's sorry. No, that's, they're they're separate. I'm looking. I'm just. Yeah. So this okay. this is why we see an ad in here, for example, for Jell-O itself, like a Jell-O product, for Genesee dessert powder, which mm. was something related we but different. Saw that. And then uh, tapioca when. pudding. Mix. We've seen the Genesee dessert powder before. Yeah, probably. Because it was made by the Jell-O company because it was originally, Jell-O was originally Genesee Got Foods it. Company. That would have been probably the previous Je Jell-O episode then. Yes. Um, so, <laughs> Minute Tapioca is Minute still Tapioca around. Minute Tapioca is still around. So these are not in color, so I'm losing out on some of the, like this is really crystal clear Jell-O. I'd love to know what color it actually is. Um, so, you know. Good looks. Good win look, customers. Win customers. Interesting garnishes. So. To watch any group of hungry people making their choices from a display of desserts is to become freshly convinced of the business asset in the attractively garnished service. The dessert, which gets itself picked up and 
parades triumphantly past the cashier's desk is the one which looks attractive in its setting on the counter, and any number of people in a service restaurant are tempted to order a lovely dessert when they catch sight of it on a waiter's tray or on another table. Color, texture, shape, <clears throat> all play a part in this appeal, and all are carefully planned for in the service suggestions offered here. Simple jello cubes and flakes combined with fruits, cream, and cake to make these enticing desserts, and every bit of garnish counts. I think that that is the essential argument for why mm -hmm. you use gelatin in in dishes. Is It's all about presentation. Yeah, because you can make flakes <laughs> and cubes and wait till we get to the Joys of Jello cookbook. We're going to have fun with that. Look at the layers on this thing. It, it's all about presentation. <laughs> Effective self-layering fruit molds. They look elaborate yet are easy to make and convenient to serve. Here, everyday fruits are presented in a novel manner. Layered peach and banana molds, a loaf to serve in slices, and orange and grape layers make for individual service all ready to unmold. And it looks really good. It probably tastes fine as like a dessert type mm -hmm. item. I probably would not want it because of the texture. But... Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of with you on that. But here we have more eraser shreds. Mm. Sorry, I love some shredded coconut, so, and I like minute tapioca. That, that would work for me. Let's <laughs> see. Um, we got some cream puddings, including being used probably as a clear filling. So, uh, we've talked about various kinds of like gelatin and like the aspects and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but the Jell-O company is also really well known for pudding. Yes, they were very well known for pudding. And some other things that we're going to talk about shortly, um, which were variations on that. But yeah, they also, so they started making Jell-O jell powder, commercial Jell-O powder first. But pretty early on, they also started making the pudding mixes, um, which came in a few flavors and they have since expanded exponentially. Um, yeah, some of you remember, may may be familiar with like snack packs and may have memories of Jello pudding pops and things like that. Well, I'm just trying to figure out whether we should clarify because uh, I I am aware of pudding as the yes course yes we meaning mean dessert the, generally the and but I wasn't textured, sure yes. like a custard custard type thing. but but yes that is I, what we are using here. I was figuring trying to figure out if I needed to like figure out and a different term to use dessert, to, yeah. to clarify uh, pudding in this context is, is a custardy type uh, dessert. Yeah. There's just some delightful colors going on. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll skip ahead in time a little bit because this is one of the things I love to talk about. Um, in the 1960s, oh, no. the gelatin company made <laughs> a new product because this was the mid-1960s, and <clears throat> DuPont was like, had come out with the motto of better living through chemistry, and we thought, let's live better through chemistry. Mm -hmm. And apparently somebody Isn't got that on that bandwagon. And cool whip came from? Yes. So, <laughs> magical desserts with whip and chill. Whip and chill. Deluxe dessert nuts. Um, whip and chill. Whip and chill. So this is a product from Jell-O Corporation. Um, it is somewhere between, as far as I can tell from my reading, because I've never tasted this because it's not made anymore and probably shouldn't be consumed by humans if you could find it. Um, it was somewhere between a texture of like a pudding and uh, a mousse. So it was like, kind of like, kind of whipped. Um, if you see things on the internet that say it still exists, I mean, technically you can recreate it. Uh, technically you can find like 30 to 40 to 50 year old packages of it, but I would not consume them. Um, <laughs> So, the thing about Whip and Chill, it was all chemicals. Like, all. There was not anything that resembled an actual ingredient. It only came in four flavors. As you can see from this delightful picture, we had lemon, we had strawberry, and we had chocolate and vanilla. Wait, that's chocolate? That is chocolate. Yes. I assumed it was butterscotch, but okay. No, it was chocolate. <laughs> um, so, Whip and Chill was basically like you would add ingredients to it and you would whip it up and chill it, much like Jell-O, but it was, again, a very different texture 
and meant to produce something. It was usually mixed with milk. Um, and so again, it was kind of like somewhere between a pudding, a dessert pudding like we were just talking about, and a mousse. Mm -hmm. um, but if you read people, there's, there's from what I've read, because I've gotten really interested in the history of this, you, there's two kinds of people. There's people who remember it and love it and are like, I wish they still made it. And people who can describe nothing but the, the fact that it only tasted of chemicals. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. So, yes, delicious and disturbing is a great great explanation, Blue Rooster. So let's look at some delightful uh, examples of this. It's the poo emoji, but... But in a mold. In a, a pear lime color. <laughs> pear lime uh, color. Sorry. <laughs> so what I like about this is it has helpful hints about how to prepare this, because maybe you have any Whip and Chill when it came out was pretty novel in its appearance right you always use cold liquid it wasn't like gelatin where you were using hot water to like melt it down um they even say if your kitchen is warm like this was meant to be cold if your kitchen is warm or it's during not... summer months chill the bowls and beaters before you even use them that makes sense okay. um yeah so uh you could also use all water instead of milk if you wanted to make a lighter version of whatever it is that you're making um and they talk about using a rotary beater so We've got our freezing time. So how long is it gonna take me to chill this or how long is it gonna take me to freeze this depending on what I'm doing with it or what size it is or something like that. Um, you could use whole milk, you could use skim milk, you could use water depending on you know what you are looking to ultimately produce. And like, do you want something really dense and heavy? Do you want something a little bit lighter? Um, so we have this refrigerator. We'll look at some recipes. We have some, some refrigerator loaf. We've filled some meringues with strawberry goo. <laughs> And then we have our, our lime and pear, uh, creamy whip. I wanna, yeah. So for that refrigerator loaf, so we have this little loaf here, this guy. Um, so what this actually is, oh, let's refocus that. Oh, refocusing camera. So that actually has a lot going on. It's got lady fingers that have been split. We've got our vanilla whip and chill. We've got some sugar and we've got some vanilla and we've got some peanut brittle for texture, because if you're gonna put a whole bunch of soft things together. Um, and so basically you would line an eight by 12 loaf pan with something, in this case, wax paper, um, leave a little room because you're gonna be able to get this back out later on. Um, and you kind of like layer your lady fingers, you put your dessert mix and sugar uh, and some vanilla in there and you're gonna chill it until it's like got a little bit of heft to it so it's gonna stay in place. Then you mix in your peanut brittle and then you put half that in the pan. And then you put more lady fingers and you put more so you're making a little layered dessert you can also do a chocolate version of this um they've also cross we're cross listing our advertising they recommend using baker's chocolate because again by this point this was general foods and they owned bakers as well um or you can do a nut loaf so sorry i'm distracting myself with um and now you're okay i don't know how you got there sorry. i can't wait for this <laughs> It's Whip and Chill. And so I was checking the date that Whip and Chill was available, which was the 60s and part of the 70s. And then I was checking to, because Devo's Whip It seemed like a perfect advertising song for Whip and Chill. But um, while Devo formed in 1973 and would have had overlap with the product Whip and Chill, the song Whip It wasn't out until 1980. And so therefore never could have been used to advertise the product. But that's what my brain did to me just now. So I do like that we've crossed the streams as it were. So we've taken whip and chill in the 60s and we've put uh, riced strawberry gelatin around the edges. Mm -hmm. So we've got gelatin and we was putting whip and chill, mostly chemicals. Um, and then they did something similar where there were a lot of pies that they did. They were like a frozen pie or a semi-frozen pie where they've taken chunks or cubes of jello and fruit and stuffed them inside of it. I can't decide what your face is caught on. No, I just was wondering, because uh, I don't know, like the, with the modern like food chemistry type culinary practices uh, of like powdered peanut butter or like where they dehydrate things, but there, there's the um, the method where they take a dropper of something and mm -hmm. drop it into a liquid, and it turns into like yes. basically little balls. Yes. And so the riced gelatin made me think of the, the little agar, balls. Right? Yeah, like making using agar agar and, to make little balls. Yeah. Okay, it's agar agar. I so think it's so. not gelatin that does that. I don't, no, but sure. it has it does similar things, but it's not actually gelatin. Okay. It's it's just a different. Um, it was just it. That's what it reminded me of. 
and probably purely visual. Now, if we've, we, and I know we've looked at Prune Whip before in the context of gelatin desserts, but don't worry, we haven't left it out when we get to Whip and Chill. <laughs> that Diva was better than where uh, uh, their yes. brain went uh -huh. because they were trying not to make Whip and Chill and Netflix and Chill um, <clears throat> jokes. <clears throat> Just so you know, no words can describe the goodness of Prune Whip. But this is Prune Whip that is not with Jello. This is Prune Whip made with Whip and Chill. So, it's got prune syrup and more prune syrup or water and land stewed prune. That's, that's there a lot of prunage. A, there was a period of time where people were just yeah. weirdly obsessed with prune. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Worf probably would have liked it, since, considering the, the next generation reference in chat from Blue Rooster. A warrior's whip. <laughs> a warrior's whip. <laughs> um, a pineapple upside down cake. Not really cake. It's just it's whip gelatin. and chill. Um. <laughs> wow, eggnog milkshake with whip and chill. Mm-hmm. Eggnog milkshake. Everyone will love this for an afternoon snack. So again, vanilla whip and chill, sugar, <laughs> egg, and milk. Ooh, and rum extract. Yeah. So we're getting a little. But you can also do lemon or strawberry or chocolate because again, we got to feature all the flavors, but I only just those. Don't know why you need the whip and chill because you can do the eggnog really easily without it. But you don't have to. You can do it with whip and chip. Um, now we get into some magical spectaculars. Spectacular, spectacular. Um, no words in the vernacular. No words in the vernacular. The uh, baglioni. Yep. Yeah. Americana. Blade. Right. Americana with red currants that you can't get. <laughs> Wait, the yeah. Anyway, this is we've about talked about that before. This is about whip this and chill. This is not about convenience. This is about whip and chill. Yeah, exactly. Um, I never liked the word surprise in a recipe. I know I've said that on the show before. <laughs> pear, like, I don't know what the surprise is here because it's it's I pear it's surprise. The pistachios. Probably there's pistachios in there, and it's like, ooh, surprise, something crunchy. Um, I don't want a crunchy surprise in my pears. No. Uh, now we're getting like like fancy decorative. We've got like a layered thing going on here, like, um, which I think is a, a burnt sugar creme. So like almost like a, a creme brulee, mm -hmm. like a custardy thing. Um, uh, the surprise, a free trip to urgent care dentistry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Again, a uh, nice crossover because General Foods also owned Maxwell House at this point. So they're like, hey, you, oh, oh, that's the pot de creme because that's got the coffee at the bottom. Okay. Or maybe this is. I don't know. There's is that a lot the same called. as a pot de creme? Yes, yes. I just pronounced it the... No, this is pot de creme. Yes. But it's basically the same. This is the same as a pot de creme. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Magical pies. Yeah. Um, I, let, yeah. I mean, honestly, if it made some of those pies easier... Like custard okay, pies but easier. Pineapple and cottage cheese and strawberry. So we have now we've got we, okay. we're mixing up our game. We've I mean, got we've pineapple got, and cottage cheese is a, a fairly classic pairing. Correct. But now we have unflavored gelatin and water. Like strawberry? And pineapple and sugar and cottage cheese and lemon juice and whip and chill. So we have to get into jello and whip and chill. So there's a lot going on here. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then we have some fruit gra glazed pies, so almost like a, a fruit tart where you do mm -hmm. a glaze over the top. You can do a uh, pie with whip and chill, and then you can glaze it with fruit. Cream cheese pie. Cream cheese pie. You can, um, Interesting. Fruit glaze and a lettuce whip. Creamy apple pie? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it could be great. I don't know. Um, let's see, mincemeat pie? One cup of moist mincemeat. Drained. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and whip and chill. Surprise, surprise. Uh, let's see. You can also... Frozen magic. Make magic. Uh, Pressing X to doubt. <laughs> <laughs> if we can do apple pie with a slice of cheddar. So, yeah, but yeah. that's good. Apple, I don't know that this pie back here like is really apple pie happy. or apple crisp. 
uh, served warm with a melted slice of cheddar on it is a very, um, a, a very Virginia thing. <laughs> like it's also Appalachian very, very uh, part New of England, Virginia. Upper New England. Um, so this is one of my favorite pictures of all time. Anytime I show, like, talk about gelatin or jello products or gelatin products with students, this is like my favorite. They have a full on, like, baked Alaska here. People. It's amazing. <laughs> We have made baked Alaska with chemicals. Yay! I've had baked Alaska once. It was so sweet that I got sick. Now, to be fair, <laughs> they do not call this baked Alaska. They call it a peppermint candy igloo. Because okay. I think that's peppermint. There's some sort of peppermint okay. filling. Um, yeah, here it is. The peppermint candy igloo. So it's a brown meringue over a peppermint flavored, flavored mold. Um, it doesn't look like a big at all. No, it was just their play on Baked Alaska. <laughs> oh, because Alaska, mm -hmm. Big Blue. I mm -hmm. get it. Yes. It wasn't very good. Why is that bouncing? Because mean? it likes to, because you've been moving the pages around, and oh, okay. sometimes it just starts to bounce. So. I made it bad. <laughs> I thought it was getting into the music that I picked out. Um, we also have this delightful triple mold where we've got layers of whip and chill inside of layers of whip and chill. In a mm. tall, it's fancy a turducken mold. of whip and chill. It's a turducken of whip and chill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, oh, we've got another holiday eggnog mold. So if you want to go, if you want to do another eggnog dish with this. Um, <laughs> Whip and chill, chill duck in. In. Yep. <laughs> Lord Exactly. Lord. Uh, you can even make like cakes and cupcakes with this, apparently. Um, I mean, the cupcake <laughs> is being used as frosting, but you know. Uh, sunny sauce? Sunny sauce is uh, mm -hmm. lemon whip and chill with cream cheese. And it's a, it's like a, a buttercream, but made with whip and chill. Oh, and cream, or it's cream cheese frosting with whip and chill. Mm -hmm. A lemon cream cheese frosting with whip and chill, mm -hmm. obviously. And then you pour it all over your cake like that. Apparently the sun tastes like lemon. Uh, yeah. Well, if the moon's made of cheese. <laughs> Rainbow um, cake. Oh. And then, so then we just have these, this is, every whip and chill recipe is just plain delicious because whip and chill is delicious, just plain. <laughs> and it came in these big boxes with like, I think two packets in them, like two it's big packets. It's so bizarre because that is so similar to like just what Jello pudding is marketed. Just like all of this. Just the colors. The colors. And again, I will repeat what I said at the start of looking at this item. The whole point of this was in the mid-1960s, and there was this idea of better living through chemistry. And this is what you can produce with chemistry. Because I feel like basically this entire book could be done using jello pudding. Yes, except, but then you wouldn't have whip and chip. Right. But, yeah. It's just, the from a marketing standpoint, the it's like they just switched from whip and chill to their pudding product. Yes. <laughs> um, so we'll look at a couple of small things Knox, here. Man, we're going diet. back to Knox for a moment. 25 days of good balanced meals. So they were really hooked on that diet planning. Now you can counting. forget calorie counting, forget meal plan. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's weird that you would just forget meal planning, but. I mean, I forget meal planning all the time. So, so we got, I need to move it down. <laughs> We can do breakfast, grapefruit juice seat. We're back to let's put our gelatin into a drink. So that, yes. Going. He's going in close. This booklet is ready for its close up, Mr. DeMille. Yeah. So we can have our grapefruit juice with gelatin. So it'll fill you up again. It's the idea that it's thicker than the normal beverage you would consume and it might somehow fill you up. Apparently, this is the grapefruit and orange juice diet. Um, but. Uh, so we can have grapefruit juice with gelatin and a soft cook egg and toast with butter and again, skim milk and coffee. A lot of beverages happening a, in these breakfasts. Again, I don't, I don't understand because grapefruit juice is fine on its own. Why does it need gelatin in it? Mm -hmm. Orange juice, I assume is fine on its own. I hate orange juice. I don't like oranges, uh, but I still don't know why you would need gelatin in them. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, 
you know. Tomato juice as well. I'm surprised they don't have carrot juice. Put it in coffee? You could put it in coffee. They don't necessarily list that here, but there are other ads. Wasn't coffee one of the Jell-O flavors? In the 30s, there was briefly a coffee flavored Jell-O. Mm -hmm. And then it went away and it never came back. Um, as long as you keep your gelatin away from my, my cup coffee. of coffee. Coffee flavored Jell-O would have um, really upset you in the 1930s then. I mean, this dinner right here, we've got tomato juice with gelatin, broiled liver, broiled bacon, diced beets, chopped spinach, and still grapefruit and coffee. That is a meal that I don't know that you could pay me to eat. There's like... Mm. Mm -mm. But also I read that as grapefruit coffee. I mean, <laughs> if you want to make grapefruit coffee, that is on you. <laughs> Let's see. I don't want to make the camera bounce too much. Um, so this is just meal planning. We've got a whole bunch of different meals. You'll see things recurring again and again. Uh, we also have some chickens that are hiding a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Key squared, I love that. Picturing the inevitable results of feeding a caffeinated Jello salad to the kids at a Jello salad late in the family reunion. <laughs> also, the amount of sugar that people might have been putting in the Jello salads that they were they were producing. Um, uh, what was the name of that account? I remember. No. Oh, I can't. Let's see. So, and again, we're going to advertise this as like. Uh, here we go. Here's what I was talking about before. Just drink an envelope of Knox in a beverage, hot or cold, half an hour before you eat. And they call it a de-appetizer. So it will take the edge off your hunger. Okay. It gives you supplemental protein. I guess. I guess. And they even packaged it at one point in these, like, boxes with little individual packages so that you could specifically do this with mm -hmm. it without having to, like, measure it out or anything like that. Where's the sophisticated whip and chill cocktail? Hmm, interesting question. Uh, considering I would not consume any whip and chill I could buy, I have seen it for sale. Um, let's see. Uh, this is a more, okay, if, so. If you want more interesting depictions of, um, or interesting presentations of food in photography, oh. might I recommend. Oh, 70s dinner party. Yeah, that's 70s a good one. dinner party. That's a good one. So is mid-century <laughs> menu. That's the other good one if you want to see more of this. Okay, so we're going to dive into uh, one of my favorite publications. This was issued again and again. This is the 1963 edition of The Joys of Jello. We have about four or five different editions here. Yeah, that one. This Vintage one? Housewife mid-century menu. Oh, no. Nope, not that one. Uh, mid-century menu might not be on Instagram. So, uh, anyway. Uh, so this is the 1963 oh, Joys of Jello cookbook. Yes, they do. Um, Mid-century menu posts a lot of recipes. Also makes and feeds family mid-century recipes. Uh, a jelly old fashioned. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> a jell old fashioned. A jell old fashioned. So 1963. This is not a first edition, but the Joys of Jello book came out in a lot of different editions. We have several. So we're gonna we're gonna spend a little time with this one because it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, we've got we're gonna talk about desserts. We're gonna talk about what they're calling two-way recipes. <laughs> meaning desserts or salads meaning okay. you can have them at the beginning of a meal or at the end uh we'll talk about salads or why not or both, both. or both you can <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll uh. talk about new with new things you can do with gelatin we'll talk about some tips and tricks are um, these new in 1963 yeah okay yes <laughs> um they could still be new today uh in that you might not have seen them before rainbow cake Rainbow, rainbow cake. cake. We've got rainbow cake. We've got pineapple cheese dessert. We've got ring around the fruit. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> they start with desserts, which I love. They're like, forget everything else. We're going to start with desserts. Why wouldn't you start with dessert? Yeah. Every meal should start with dessert. Um, let's see. Pumpkin Sillians. Is that... Definition of salad: How we got yes. so many Midwestern it is exactly salads with marshmallows. Tied to that. Um, so we have this delightful Bavarian. So if you you can use this is one of those ones where they're like you can pick any flavor gelatin you would like, and you can add sugar, celery, or, 
Yeah, so, well, we're going to get to that in a moment. <laughs> yes, you could, if you wanted to make this with a savory flavor, you could make a savory Bavarian. It might be kind of weird with the Dream Whip or whipped cream. <laughs> uh, Dream Whip, if you're not familiar, was also a Jello product from the mid-century that was designed. Um, it was like instant whipped cream. Like, it was uh -huh. it was a powder that you added liquid to to make a whipped cream that you could then put on top of things or in things, um, but it was in a powdered form. Okay, so Cool Whip is owned by Kraft, which now owns yes. Jell-O. No. No. Yeah. No? I don't think so. Kraft and Heinz are merged. I'm just trying to figure out, because... It should be... Jell-O is owned by... General Foods. Kraft Heinz. Oh, okay. Because General merged Foods even more. was purchased by okay. Kraft Heinz. So, yes... Jello and Cool Whip are now owned by the same company. Um, always fun when you find someone like commentary in a cookbook. I do this at home. Uh, it, the habit I picked up from my grandmother and my mother. Mm -hmm. So somebody likes this milk sherbet, which, mind you, they use they use black cherry or black raspberry gelatin. Interesting. Yeah. Those are flavors that are not available today. Oranges. Not available. as much. Yes, there are a lot of flavors that went out of the that came into being and then went out of fancy. And then we're going to talk about a couple more of them. Um, but yeah, and then they came back around. So in the eighties and nineties, they started doing different things with Jell-O. Um, some people like me might remember sparkling Jell-O, which came in like a wild berry flavor and like a fancy grape flavor. Sorry. It's that mm -hmm. makes me think of, um, crystal Pepsi. And then there was uh, also Jell-O <laughs> 123, which was a product that set itself into three separate layers. When it, yes, yes, I yeah. remember that one. Some people might remember Jell-O. And Jell-O Pudding Pops. So, then we have these pops. guys, which are, um, it was called the Crown Jewel. And it could be a pie, it could be a mold, it could be in a spring form cake pan. That is really pretty, though. The, and you, that slice yeah. of cake. Or broken window glass cake, which was the other title for it, which I love. So you would have to make multiple kinds of Jell-O. And then you could, uh, you would make that with water and pineapple juice. Uh, and then you could put it into something else, whether it was a pie or a spring form pan or it's a mold. Very appetizing to look at. And I know it would not be nearly as satisfying to actually consume. Yeah, I want to <laughs> talk about some variations, right? So we have the crown jewel dessert in a ladyfinger or crumb lined pie, which is our little spring form mm -hmm. pie pan. It's gorgeous. Um, and then you have the crown jewel cheese dessert. So you're going to make the dessert, but instead of uh, you're going to add in uh, two packages of cream cheese or six ounces of cream cheese and milk instead of the dessert topping. Kind of scary. Um, we have a cherry cola mold, which used cherry gelatin and strawberry, but also had mayonnaise and sweet cherries in it. And your favorite cola beverage. And your favorite cola beverage and cream cheese. So you can make it with tab if you want. Mm -hmm. And chopped nuts. So you're going to fold all that in, make a mold. Any shape of your choosing that you happen to have. Um, Birthday surprise. What better way to serve ice cream? Then in the middle of a jello mold that is decorated with candles that have are sitting in gumdrops. Yeah. I mean, naturally. Mm -hmm. I mean, why not? There's also marshmallows that they've kind of like cut open into little flowers. Oh. That's a little technique you can do. Um, we have some sort of classic ideas like a Charlotte Roots, which was kind of a classic dessert that goes back centuries, but they were doing a Jello version I of it. I do not know what a Charlotte Roots is. It's kind of like that Bavarian. So it's like you're going to, in this case, you're going to have gelatin and water or Jello and water um, with whipped cream or Dream Whip mixed in. So that, like, and then you fold nuts into it all together and then you put lady fingers around the side and you put it in the middle. Didn't it wasn't always made with gelatin, but if you but it's a very classic dessert. Um, not the clothing store. There's also a clothing store called that instead of the dessert, but that's confusing. Why would we have <laughs> something? Uh, yeah. Here we have a pineapple. Well, we have an upside down cake in this case, peach. Um, so you can have a cake layer with some gelatinized fruit on top. Um, well, that's a very pretty one. We have very pretty triple layers, Charlotte Roots. Uh, For anyone else 
who didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. That's a Charlotte. That's a that's a modern fancy one. This recipe is like really it, it goes back to at least the 18th century and possibly older. Um, so this is a, a far more modern one, but uh, so you've so, got. So. I had I had no idea what it was. So yeah. Uh, that was <laughs> that image was from Epicurus. If if anybody wondered. We can do some fun layered things. Once again, we've got fruit in gelatin, pretty classic. And then we can put some some Dream Whip on top. I love that we have combinations, right? Suggested gelatin and frozen fruit combinations. So they're using frozen fruit. Strawberry and strawberry, mm. lemon or mixed fruit gelatin with mixed fruit, uh, lemon or they used to make a lemon lime gelatin and a mixed fruit gelatin, also flavors we don't really have anymore. Uh, I like lemon lime with melon balls. Um, orange pineapple with sliced peaches, raspberry with raspberry, black raspberry with blueberries. They made an orange pineapple. They did make an flavor. orange pineapple. I found I, I've got the list of. Oh, we'll get we'll get to that. <laughs> they also had so. an orange coconut pudding mix, I believe, at one time. Interesting. The orange pineapple is not on this list. I'm going to look for a better. Uh, we have a lovely fruit filled. Cake roll, so a Swiss roll that is filled with fruit gelatin. Because mm -hmm. why not? I mean, that's it's because it's normally filled with like jelly. Mm -hmm. So I like these pies; they're very pretty. Mm -hmm. The grasshopper pie looks a really gourmet's good. delight that can be a busy homemaker speciality. Again, lime or lemon and lime jello. Uh, and this that actually has two different kinds of alcohol in it too. It actually has creme de menthe and creme de cacao. So, uh, so you can make that. Um. <laughs> I knew it gets grasshopper pie does sound good if you like mint. Would anyone like some avocado pie? Pineapple tops this unusually tasty avocado creation. So package of lime or lemon lime jello, salt, boiling water, crushed pineapple, lime juice, a medium avocado peeled and halved, cream cheese, whipped cream, or prepared drip whim, or dream whip, and uh, and then you're gonna have a crumb crust. So you could make one, you could buy one. Um, and this is the strange thing that you can <laughs> produce, which I wish was in color because it had to have been green, right? Or like greenish yellow yeah. from uh here we go cherry waldorf salad i think it looks really pretty do i want to consume it maybe not so much but oh did you find a list of flavors uh-huh okay it's from um mid-century menu mm -hmm. we'll try to share this but let's see how it goes i mean i'll share the page it's on yeah. I can only zoom in so much before it loses resolution. But, when, but if you're interested ready. in a timeline of jello flavors, we'll <laughs> talk about that. So we've got this delightful looking cherry Waldorf salad. I mean, but think about it, that's got celery and um bananas and apples. They left the mayonnaise out, thankfully. I say they left the mayonnaise out. And then Here, this enter the frosty melon. <laughs> so in this, this is case, like a frosted salad, but but a melon. So we have a cantaloupe <laughs> and we take or, or a honeydew and you gut it. Frosted sandwich, sorry. Yes, but, like a frosted sandwich. So melon. you're going to gut this, right? Uh, so oh, we're going to dissolve gelatin in boiling water and cold water. <laughs> yes. But that is the place exactly. But so you have to peel the why? melon, leaving it whole, and then you're going to cut a slice from one end and you're going to scoop out the seeds and drain it. You place the melon in a bowl, you fold the fruit into the gelatin, <laughs> And then you spoon the uh, that into the melon, and then you put the slice back on, and you stick some toothpicks in there. Because mm -hmm. appearance. Then, before you, more. then you take your peeled melon, <laughs> your your peeled melon, your wet peeled melon, and you're gonna take cream cheese and milk, and you're gonna fluff it, make it into a nice little frosting, and then you're gonna frost it. And then you can cut it into slices. If you're feeling melancholy. If you're feeling melancholy, this is going to make you feel even more melancholy, Keith Gordon. What did they stuff in the middle of that melon? That is, um, 
It is any flavor of gelatin you would like with uh, with the guts of, like, so uh, with drained fruit. So any fruit. They peeled the melon, right. cut it in half, scooped out the inside. Not even cut it in half. You just cut the end off okay. to gut it. And then you shove the jello and fruit. Your, whatever combination of fruit and jello mix you want, mm -hmm. you put back in there. And then you attach this one little this one little slice that you've taken off with toothpicks until the jello sets, and then you Got cut it. it into slices with your, okay. with your big knife, like a frosted sandwich. Mm -hmm. But it's a frosty melon. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> this um, is my comment. <laughs> this is fine. This is this is fine. Again, citrus surprise. I don't want to be surprised. Thank you very much. Um. What is a citrus surprise? Uh, yeah. So you've got orange and grapefruit sections, some gelatin, some salt, oddly enough. Um, and that's like the bottom layer. And then, yes. And then you're going to garnish this with sour cream, because why not? Um, let's see. There are combinations of things that start happening here. Minty pear? Mm hmm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Think that, about that for a minute. Mint and pears don't pair. At least but not in my brain. Canned pears and mint extract. In lime jello. Mm -hmm. So it's not just mint and pear, but also lime and cream cheese. Yes. All the flavors together. Mint pear sounds, sounds like, like a toothpaste. toothpaste. It does. <laughs> um Red currant mold. We have some red currant mold, but that requires you to have red currants. Or any currants. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. In <clears> color. <throat> Frozen fruit salad. It's a refreshing dessert or salad. Have it before a meal. Have it after a meal. Have it as a meal. I don't really know. Um... So this again takes that technique that like like this is mostly fruit, but like so you've got some some gelatin flavor of one of the recommended kinds. You got pineapple, lemon juice, mayonnaise, whipping cream, or sour cream. Well, banana and grapes and cherry maraschino cherries and nuts. I can, in some ways, I understand because all of these are really easy to do. Mm -hmm. Like, it makes sense that they became notorious cafeteria food mm -hmm. because they're easy to do and you can scale easy batches mass produce, really yep. easily. If if we had still been doing like the, um, uh, oh gosh, what were they called? The um, little diner places where you went and opened the door. And no, yeah. Uh, I can't think of what they were called. Anyway, but those were earlier than in this era. So we're going to move to savory salads. So we're going to get savory <laughs> for a minute here. Sea dream. Sea dream. So we have the sea dream salad, which was a classic. Also, the vegetable trio. So, uh, also, obviously, you Auto could... Automat. Thank you, yes. P-squared. That's exactly what I was trying you to remember. You could obviously work. make your, your salad, cabbage salad, and then fill it with cooked shrimp. Oh. Oh, oh, that's... Okay, that's better. Like, if that's cabbage flavored or celery flavored, that makes more sense. Yes, I, I looked at it and assumed it was lime jello. Um, well, so. Which technically, okay. seafood with lemon or lime would be a classic pairing, but. Hold on, I gotta go to the right page because I might be wrong on that. Be dream. It was lime or lemon lime gelatin with cucumber, vinegar, and grated onion and shrimp in the middle. No? No? I feel like celery flavored jello would have made more sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. But yeah. lime, I guess, because you do put lemon with seafood. So uh, under the sea salad is another one of those jello salads that has become like a staple and like when you think about mid century. Why cooking. is it called under the sea? There's nothing sea about it. But it's 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 sea green. It's pears and cream cheese. Yeah. But it's sea green well, after, you know, so how do you when do you it unmold today? it. today? Because it's lemon lime jello and they don't make lemon lime. Yeah, but lime. you can use, no, it's lime or lemon lime. So you ah. can substitute. Um, we have this just vegetables and sour cream. That's not off to a good start. 
It's basically taking a vegetable salad and then, uh... You're at your next Back yeah. to the Future marathon. I do like the vegetable <laughs> sour cream. It has lemon or lemon lime jello, bouillon cubes, boiling water, sour cream, it's because tarragon vinegar. When they got rid of the savory gelatins, they defaulted to the lemon or lemon lime as yes. their basic Except unflavored this is like 63 gelatin. and we haven't even gotten to the savory flavors yet. They haven't even emerged. Maybe that's why they came out with savory flavors. Okay. So, barbecue, barbecue salad. salad. This is my barbecue jello salad cube story. Um, before you came to work here, you were not subjected to this. We had a social event at the, for library staff that was a salad party. And the social committee here in the library was like, we're going to provide salad mix. Everybody bring your favorite toppings. I am a human monster. And I thought I'm gonna make barbecue jello salad cubes to bring to the party. I have I have <laughs> since I started working here brought Watergate salad. Jello barbecue jello salad cubes. So how do we make these? We make barbecue salad, sort of. So we're gonna take lemon or lemon lime jello. I used lemon, boiling water, tomato sauce, vinegar, salt, dash of pepper, additional seasonings, asterisk. <laughs> In my case, I thought, I started making this. I made this with lemon. And basically, you're making, like, barbecue sauce jello. Um, oh, Tabasco. Tabasco, right. So or I start radish. making this, and it smells unique. And I thought, well, it can't possibly get worse if oh. I add some celery salt and Worcestershire. No, yes, it can. It significantly got worse. But I set these in my fridge overnight, and then I follow the directions for the cubes. I cut them. I cut them up into little cubes. Uh, and I bring them to this party, and they were um, terrifying. I have never smelled anything like a barbecue salad, jello salad cube in my life. Um, you can also, uh, my favorite variation on this is make this into a cheese cracker pie. Just a whole filling of barbecue salad. Why? And you're supposed to serve them in chunks on a salad with shrimp and French dressing. That's how you're supposed to serve the salad cubes. And grapefruit. Greens, grapefruit, shrimp. What? All, all the things that go together. I'm, yeah. I don't also, understand. but also cheese cracker pie. Wow. So I wanted to get to that because that's that's a fun one. Uh, we have some more delightful vegetable salads. In many they look cases. really pretty. But yeah, there's a later edition of this book that is has uses a number of savory jello flavors, which I wanted to touch on because we were joking about this on Monday, and I said I'll look up the flavors. So there was a point in shortly after this when Jello produced four savory flavors of gelatin. Uh celery. Not shocking. Well. You know, tomato. Also not super shocking. Um something they called Italian seasoning, which was probably just some sort of herb like you might put like an herb flavoring combo mm -hmm. and um mixed mixed green mixed green it might be on this list we'll, we'll so. check hopefully i i have not mm. gone terribly far into this yeah. but this is so there are lots menu. of lists but if you're ever curious about all of the flavors of jello that have been made since it became a commercial product in the 1870s or 1890s uh this is an example list that someone has put together. Well, this uh, is, so well, this is mid-century menu, yeah. which is uh, Kira had already yes. given a shout out to. But uh, so 1897 original four yep. raspberry, strawberry, lemon, and orange. Yep. Then we get cherry and chocolate. Uh. Uh, and then, then 1907, we get, we get peach. Interesting. Which is also gone again, I'm pretty sure. That's an interesting... Again, we get that coffee, and in in that was only regional and did not last very long. But there was a coffee-flavored yeah. jello. Coffee-flavored jello. And there's... They have a picture of the coffee-flavored jello. Mm -hmm. Pure coffee flavor. Um, and... Yeah. If... if yeah. Mm -hmm. Jello. Mm -hmm. 1930 was when lime came out. That came out with its own recipe book. Everybody was like excited about lime. Pistachio pudding uh, came with its own recipes too. Cola, Cola flavor. which didn't make it more than a year. Uh, and then there's apple. the apple that I mentioned. Interesting. Yep. I wonder why Cola didn't make it a year. Was it just because of the war? I or don't know. that's interesting. I don't know what production of that looked like. Three uh, deep, okay. dark, and delicious flavors. Yeah. Black cherry grape and black raspberry. Yep. 
And then in the early 60s, we start getting some of these combo flavors. Blackberry, orange banana, lemon lime, strawberry banana, pineapple grapefruit. And, and we get our first celery and, and mixed flavor. vegetable. Mixed vegetable. That's one of the well, not mixed greens, mixed vegetable. Yeah. I suppose that would be like a vegetable soup type pla type flavor. Yeah, I guess so. Um, um there's 50, tomato. Si or 65. Yeah, there's a seasoned, seasoned tomato, tomato and, and Italian, Italian salad. salad. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can put anything in them. Given anything. that they were doing so many fish. savory applications, I suppose it makes sense, especially because they didn't make an unflavored. Correct. Uh, 1965, Mr. Wiggle! An artificially sweetened gelatin for children is introduced. What? The candy flavor gelatin? Is Mr. Wiggle? Mm hmm. Candy ball cherry. Candy corn orange. Jelly bean strawberry. Candy rock candy raspberry. Like lollipop lime. Gumdrop grape and candy ball cherry. I did not know about Mr. Wiggle at all. 68, wild strawberry, wild raspberry, and wild cherry. Wild, of course. Red and wild. Um, 1969. Jello, one, two, three. Then it came back and then it went away again. I don't. Oh, wait. Wow. So, yeah, yeah it, was it was brief and then it came 1969, back. 1969, and then it came back in 89 to 96. So, like, I knew it as a kid, because 89 to 96, but I did not know it was originally in 69. Wild is not normally something I want my gelatin to be. <laughs> I remember Jell-O 1, 2, 3. Uh, 1975, they brought back peach flavor. No. Oh. Interesting. It's a peach. <laughs> 78 apricot. apricot why not 78 blackberry is reintroduced but not wild blackberry it's just we're back to regular blackberry 92 berry blue oh I remember berry blue uh, 93 watermelon 94 cranberry and grape was brought back 95 cranberry strawberry and cranberry raspberry uh, 96, Island Pineapple and Peach Passion Fruit. Mm. As opposed to Landlocked Pineapple? I don't know. 97. Oh, Sparkling White Grape. The Champagne of Jello. <laughs> uh, that's as far as this tagline goes. And I think they also made a Wild Berry Sparkling. I remember that. Um, okay, let's see. That we got, was, we got time cool. to look at a couple more things. Um... <laughs> For comparison, here is the 1974 new Joys of Jello. So the new a, Joys an updated of version Jello. of that one we just looked at. So it's going to be a little bit different. This one has apparently it was 99 cents. Was 99 cents. This one has a lot more picture <laughs> pictures going on. So you know you can teach your kids how to make stuff with Jello. That's important. Give me one second here. We'll get them. That is true. Neo gets all jellos can be sparkling if you use lemonade or if you use uh, seltzer, which was a common yeah. practice to make sparkling jello before they made sparkling jello. Uh, okay. 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 Whew. There's so much going on here. Welcome to 1974, y'all. Um, so, let's see. Oh, I like this. So here we go. We got some tips, right? Add zip to Jello gelatin by adding by substituting carbonated soft drink for part or all of the water. Use cola, ginger ale, root beer, or any carbonated lemon or lime mixers. Mm -hmm. um, That's just like what you were saying. All Jello can yep. be sparkling. So we've got our classic cubes, just just a good old classic. Classic. We got some double strawberry, which is strawberry with uh with frozen strawberry <laughs> like macerated. But and, no whip and chill. But no whip and chill and no dream whip. Um, Apparently bird's eye quick thaw, uh, quick thaw strawberries. Did you know you can use gelatin to frost grapes? 
Why do you want to frost grapes? Uh, because you can make them look like they've been dipped in snow or sugar. They have like a sparkly little coating on them if you do this. It was used a lot as a decorative, like a decorative thing. I think we'll probably see it in here somewhere. Um, so basically you take grapes into clusters and you dip them in egg white and then you put gelatin over them and it crystallizes in little, little crystals. I never... In my life, seen such a thing. Let me, I want to find a... Just, okay, this image is fine, right? Uh, open image. So that I can share with all of y'all. I like this image partly because it includes a signature. Yeah. So there's some frosted grapes. Uh, um, they can't see it yet. But, oh, well, uh, you'll see them in a moment. There's frosted grapes. Now, I don't know if these were done with the same technique because there are other ways to do this, but. Um, Apparently, you can do that with Jello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like. I like when the picture has a signature so that <laughs> yeah. Diane Hoffmaster, thank you for your image. Uh... Um, so we've got some strawberry yogurt whip. We've got some chiffon marble. Um, this includes bird's eye cool whip, non-dairy whip topping. Uh, bird's eye must whip. have been a owned by the same yep. company and because they that's not the first time they've mentioned bird's uh, eye. we can get into some some party stuff we've got we've got uh some cocktail inspired or alcoholic <laughs> versions of things uh mm, pictures so family desserts so like the stuff you're gonna make every any old night for your family <laughs> um you know the classic fruit cocktail and gelatin peach banana dessert yeah um you know ginger peach ginger peach look how happy everyone is they eat their jello and drink milk alongside it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> i told you there were fun pictures in here uh fruit flavor flakes which is just when you make the little right on page right. 20. Oh, there we go. We'll get, well, where Wait, are we? We're oh, already we are. past page 20. Okay, go back to page 20. Oh, that's this in the middle. So it's like, it's hard to see, but it's like in little, like you take a fork to it before it fully sets and you make it into little like rice flake. Like it looks like little rice grains or flakes. So that's rice. Mm -hmm. Essentially, yes. yeah. Like what uh, you mentioned before. And now everything's out of focus. One, yeah. one second. Please hold. Um, hold while we uh, refocus ourselves. Um, yeah. We've got a jellied peach Melba. <laughs> okay. With vanilla ice cream. I knew those look like butter balls in the middle, but it's actually vanilla ice cream at least. <laughs> Uh, we're, we still have je we still have jelly prune whip. Still. It has less prune in it now, though. It's got other things in there, too. It's a warrior's dessert. Yes. So. Match your jello dessert to your outfit. To your pantsuit. So, now we've gotten, we're getting into fancy stuff. If you're going to somebody's house, mm -hmm. you've got to bring something fancy in 1974. Um... Yeah, I agree, Neil Gets. Like, if I ate Jello, some of these don't sound that terrible. It's mm -hmm. just sometimes some of them do. Um, so, we have, look at these fancy titles Strawberries Romanov, which is mm -hmm. what the lady in the picture is carrying that matches her pantsuit. Um, Topaz Parfait, which again includes coffee and brandy or rum. Mm -hmm. Cherry Burgundy Dessert, which has port wine in it. So, we're getting fancy. Ported cherry dessert. Mm -hmm. I assume it has port. It does have yeah. port. It also has sour cream in it, though, and I'm a little unsettled by that. And sweet cherries. We have melon bubble, <laughs> uh, which can be made with orange juice instead of liqueur or without orange juice or liqueur. But apparently, control. Yes, or orange juice, or omit the orange juice or the liquor. Okay. Uh huh. <laughs> Lots of options. Um, well, that's good. You can just make it with water. That's true. You can just make it with water. So we have chiffons. Got fancy. <clears throat> I can't. I don't, there's so many things going on in this picture. I don't know where to focus first. I think I want to go to this party. 
I think I want to know what's happening at this party in 1974. That they only have Jello dessert. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Although this looks kind of like a bowl of salsa. I know it's not, but <sighs> it's definitely a Jello corporate party. Jellied yes. holiday nog, which is probably sorry. This. Why? Because you can't. But but why? But you can't. <laughs> the cello, the cello to people ratio is too high. <laughs> that is an excellent observation. <laughs> Why? Why did they all bring it? Did they not coordinate what they were bringing to the party? Um. Wow. Yeah. Pink lady pie. Pink lady pie. These centerpieces. We've got little little flower gardens of centerpieces. Mm -hmm. Uh. They're probably perfectly. Oh. Yeah, they're just little fruit tarts, and you use the gelatin as like the glaze for mm -hmm. the tart. Um, lime pie. Lime pie. There we go. Uh, which has no key limes in it, just limes. What? <laughs> I don't specify. <laughs> Does it even have limes? I don't. Well, know. it has lime it juice. It has lime juice. And lime, lime zest. But not specified as key lime. Uh, we've got strawberry supreme. Key lime is different than your standard lime. That is true. It is different. Grasshopper dessert. The grasshopper delight. It's even got fancy little chocolate curls on it. I still, like, it just seems weird mm -hmm. to do what should be a mint and chocolate forward dessert As and start lime. with lime. Yeah. Lime and, and mint and yeah. I mean, really, that's more mojito. -y. If it's a lime and mint, it's more mojito. -y. Yeah, it's just weird because if, it, if, if the grasshopper is supposed to be mint and chocolate, and to start with lime just seems wrong. 1974 in Jello form. That's the crown cake it's, again. It's gorgeous. It is so pretty. It would be so disappointing because I want these to taste like yeah, lollipops that. That like they the color is so vibrant i want them to taste like a lollipop but it's jello so the flavor is going to be like one third as strong mm -hmm. as it should be this one <laughs> looks like corn salsa to me like corn salsa and tomato i know it's not but um so we have some fancy dishes let's see what else do we have a Richelieu. A Richelieu mold. Very, yeah, very fancy. I like that it's any red flavor. We don't care what it tastes like, just any red flavor. <laughs> any red flavor. <laughs> what does red taste like? What does red taste like? Red 40. <laughs> uh, here, Patriotic. Mode. Here's the Alaska mold. surprise, <clears throat> which is baked Alaska, but not. Because we're, yeah. So we make some gelatin with uh, water and ginger ale, and we set that to firm. And then we make more gelatin and put ice cream in it, mm -hmm. like you do. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we're gonna put cubes into the not into the ice cream gelatin, and then we're gonna form that up for a while. Then we're gonna make our meringue that we totally cover it with, and then we, we broil that. So there's it's like ice cream jello mm -hmm. and jello jello. In a mm -hmm. We also have a patriotic mold if you want to celebrate July 4th. Um, Always. Although, mind you, this one has the <laughs> options of black cherry Concord grape or black raspberry gelatin. Okay. Concord grape specifically. None of those seem like mm -hmm. they would come out blue. No, that's not going to really be blue. Um, even with the mashed blueberries, I don't think it's going to be blue. No. Salads that help make mm -hmm. the meal. Yeah, salads that help make the meal. Here we go. Down the savory rabbit hole. We've got a green goddess salad bowl, which has these big green that's, goddess salad dressing well, cubes. That's the picture of it. Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. Jelly salad niçoise. Jelly salad niçoise. Also, note that the goddess salad has anchovy and crab meat. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, jelly salad niçoise, so tuna. But canned tuna, it's not, it's not, you know, we're not, we're not fancy here. Except when we are fancy. 
uh, also <laughs> anchovy fillets. Uh, we have a jelly pasta. I mean, gelatin does not have pasta in it, so I suppose. I, I don't know. <laughs> then we've got the under the sea salad, but it's uh, in a loaf form instead of that that stacked mold we saw before. Again, pear and lime. Yep. With some green peas and a little bit of ginger in this case. Spice it up, but not too much. <laughs> Mr. Cries in Italian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, what? No. Yeah. No. Turkey no. souffle salad. One package no. of lemon or lime gelatin. Salt. Boiling water, cold water, mayonnaise, vinegar or lemon juice, grated onion, a dash of pepper, again, not too spicy, uh, diced cooked turkey, <laughs> chopped cucumber or green pepper, chopped celery, and pimento. Okay, but why didn't they publish this recipe when they made a celery flavored jello? Because. <laughs> it's, it's like salad loaf. And we're just. They all, all these start, start with lime. lime. And, and see, the thing is, if this was a Knox cookbook, all of these recipes would work just the same, but you would start with unflavored gelatin. Because Knox made, makes unflavored gelatin. Chicken mousse. Which also includes Dream Whip, which is unsettling because it's chicken and Dream Whip and celery, pimento, and gelatin. I think the thing I am most confused about in all of this is why Jell-O has never put out an unflavored thank you, gelatin. Thank you, Blue Rooster, for the uh, the, the So quote much there. time yeah. wondering if they could. Just they didn't stop to think if they, they should. should. Yes. Uh, yeah, now we've got some side salads because we can't leave salad. We're not done with salads yet, y'all. We got more salads to go. I just, why did they... What? Why does it make I would like to point out that they've never done let's, a let's revisit visit visit our friend salad. barbecue. No. But look at what they're making it with now no. instead of lemon or lime. Orange and pineapple. I suppose I can I can follow the logic of orange and pineapple flavors in a barbecue sauce. I would I have never in my life put mushrooms in a gazpacho. And I'm not going to start with a jellied one. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we have a jellied fresh vegetable salad, which I saw we saw earlier a variation on that. And it's here it is 11 years later and it's still hanging around. No. You can put your coleslaw in jello. Why, you know. I've had pineapple with barbecue sauce, so I can. Yes. Yeah, as far as like using the orange pineapple, that makes sense in a barbecue application to me as well. Now we're into diet salads. Okay. You know. <laughs> Molded <laughs> ham and egg. Either. We're oh, jellied turkey. Once mm. again, turkey. I mean, if it was jellied cranberry to go with turkey, mm -mm. but that's not what. No, it but is. they put grapes in here though, and celery. And tarragon. It's fancy. Tarragon, of course, yes. E time. How have we not had any, like, breakfast egg dishes? Mm, they don't really do a lot with eggs and jelly. I've seen, no, well, I mean, there have been a couple of, like, hard boiled, -boiled egg, egg yeah. ones. But no, like, nobody's trying to do eggs benedict. By the way, gelatin. if you weren't sure what this was, because it's kind of hard to tell, it's tuna salad. Like, I'm, I'm actually surprised that we have not come across a recipe for eggs benedict in aspic. Well, now we have salads for special events. Because who doesn't want jello salads at their wedding in 1974? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we have creamy blue cheese salad. Which is uh, something, I think it's this one. But no, it's, I think it's this one. Or maybe it's that one. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Bill Salmon Moose. I think the, the Blue Rooster's comment of why, though, could just sit there forever and apply to all of this. Uh, not many offerings for the slim diet. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> it's do a like... slim section of the book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
uh, sequin salad. Sequin salad. So gelatin, lime gelatin water, boiling water, cold water, vinegar, salt, pepper, grated onion, very small pieces of raw cauliflower. Very small. Thanks. And diced pimento. I just had a thought, and I wonder if it's ever happened. I'm going to investigate. Okay. And this one actually has a section for kids, because there was, the, in the very beginning, there was a picture of, like, a parent and a child. Um, and so this idea that maybe there are, like, dishes for kids in here. Um, there's actually a lot of cute things. We've got, like, a uh, banana marshmallow special. We so. haven't talked about that at all. About jello shots? Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> I don't know if there's a whole lot to say. We were getting to that point in time, but, like, I don't know. It um, came up because I had the thought of, because we were, sequin salad made yes. me wonder about edible glitter in mm -hmm. Jell-O. Yes. Um, and so I went to look, and, of course, all the results were edible glitter in Jell-O shots. And, and just uh, in case you were wondering what this book was missing, here's the section on things you never thought of. Uh, but don't worry, they thought of them. Oh, dear. Mm -hmm. I'm... I'm scared. I mean, I'm take, scared. Take a look. This, this to me, this picture has always looked like like some sort of crime scene has happened that we we investigated. Marzipan is fine, but these are glazed hors d'oeuvres. I repeat, glazed hors d'oeuvres. So we're taking sandwich meat, like bread, and we're putting. This meat is... and tomato on top, or like horseradish and chili sauce no, and shrimp, this is, this... and then we're glazing it with Jello. Yeah, this is basically the what I was talking about with eggs Benedict in aspic, yeah. which would basically be this, but you, starting with an eggs Benedict. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone would like some rye bread with horseradish <laughs> and chili sauce, of most of this book. <laughs> I, I don't know. Pumpernickel with mustard and Swiss and sour cream or mm -hmm. sauerkraut and corned beef, uh, but covered in lemon gelatin. I've also seen variations covered in strawberry, and they do look like crimes. Lox and lemon dill. I mean, you know, we got uh, some candied it, fruit it's, peels. It's not on there, but I could see that mm -hmm. being one that you would do. Yeah. Since yeah. they've already got dill as part of the yeah, glaze. Yeah, the glaze. We got some candied fruit peels. That's the fruit tarts, but savory. Yeah. Mm, yeah. We've got that marzipan. <laughs> Again, not unheard of. That makes a whole lot of sense. We've got cinnamon glazed apples. You can makes make... total sense. That's that's what looks like the crime scene in that picture. Is yeah. the cinnamon glazed We've apple. We've got some fig and berry preserves. You can make your own orange glazed ham. Again, Why? actually not... A... I. What's most astonishing about this section is none of like these are the things that you never thought of and they seem the most normal yeah um and one like like a couple things let's see um just because these are kind of canonical now the magic the magic but more to the point like jello. the layered jello where people do like an intense uh -huh. like number of layers um i just wanted to show this this is from this is from 2001 this is a really con more contemporary jello cookbook but i just want to show it because it's like you know what are people doing this is the thing that has been a part of our food culture for 140 years it's not going anywhere anytime soon mm -hmm. um and we keep finding things to do with it so mm -hmm. find some is that slushes yeah we have some little slushies we've got some little berry flowers those are cute um got some little chocolate pudding cat things you've never thought of but should have before the rest of the suggestions that's how i felt about like the, the things you never thought of seemed much more straightforward and, and easy to understand than the uh some of the other so things. a lot of these are obviously like this is kind of aimed at kids and food for yeah. like little things for kids <clears throat> this well, is really cute this section is fun for kids yes we are in fun for kids um wiggly banana split yeah they're jiggly. Uh, here's quit lending. So I don't, I don't scare the camera. Um, I don't want to make it all it like. It's shaky when it's scared. Yeah, it does. Let's see. Oh, here's some pies. We got some pies going on here. Mm -hmm. Candy bar desserts. Um, so again, Jello has just become this thing that is so iconic in food culture. It's just making me want an offy pie right it's now. It's making you want an offy pie. Yeah. I mean, that's that's cool. Um, 
we got some little like some drink but not drinks they're gelatinous but they look like drinks um oh here we go you can put the you can gut a fruit and then you can fill it with gelatin you see that happen a lot actually you do that you can do that when people do that with jello shots they put them back in like like little melon bits or something like that you can do that i have never seen that before um, and this is more modern, so you see they're actually doing sugar-free. So this is in like a light or a diet section again. So mm -hmm. sugar-free Jello has become a big thing. Um, got some trifles. Let's see. Wow, look at that. That's fancy. Or cherry-topped eggnog ring. Um, I know we're running out of time, so I just wanted to look at a couple of more mod. Like these are just a. Like like a, a couple more modern examples of things. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, there's pretty sparkling fruits and kiwi. They can't, see. they can't see it there. There we go. So there's the idea of like placing things so they make a specific design mm -hmm. too, which has been a thing that's true of aspects for an eternity. Since they started. Since they started. It just used to be a lot harder back then. Um so yeah, this is a much more modern modern cookbook, but I wanted to show it just because it's a layered mm -hmm. thing. Um and uh, there's a lot more stuff, but that was um, some more contemporary gelatin history that I thought would be fun to share today. Yeah. I hope that we haven't totally grossed out chat. Um, I mean, it seems we like We definitely chat... learned about things we never thought of and wish we hadn't <laughs> ever seen. Chat, um, chat found some things or saw some things mentioned that they thought didn't seem too unappetizing. So, so you know. That's a win. <laughs> so... The question is, what food topic are you going to talk about next time? Oh, here's another one where they put melon back into a melon. Interesting. In jello. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. What am I going to talk about next time? I don't know. Um, I think there's probably still some suggestions we have floating around somewhere. Um, usually I come on like once a semester, so it probably won't be till end of year, like in December. So mm -hmm. who knows? Um, if you have suggestions, you can let us know. A December food. Or I could do something holiday themed again. Or we've done cookies, we've done, um, but we cocktails. haven't necessarily done holiday cookbooks. So we could do something holiday themed. We did holiday cocktails and mocktails. We yep. did uh, cookies. Cookies. Uh, we did. I can't remember. And oh well, Neo gets a yeah. I mean, the frosted sandwiches are more disturbing than anything. So, oh, like yes. you know. So we won't. Re we could. We, yeah, I don't have any new frosted sandwich publications. So I'll have to think about some maybe some new stuff we have and like what might be fun to talk about, or if we should go look at like, you know, what might be fun. We could do some early American cookbooks, and we could look at like the kind of work that went into preparation for holiday like for everyday meals let alone holiday meals in like early american oh history. like the the ones with the um that were more than just a cookbook but like how to run a house well also but that but also just like the early american cookbooks because cooking in america in the early days is was extremely difficult like baking was a day-long process um you know you didn't have access to a lot of ingredients things like that so um, we might look at, it would be an excuse to look at early American cookbooks and because they often were elaborate, even when they weren't elaborate, um, because that's just the way it was. And there's some really fun early American cookbooks that were published, um, and distributed widely. There are some really early, there are some early regional cookbooks and we have two out of the three early ones. Um, there was one in Virginia, one in Kentucky and one in South Carolina. And we just got the South Carolina or the Carolina one. We just got it, a copy of the first edition. So I'm really excited. Um, so we can talk about some of that kind of stuff. That might be fun. I have. It's, I see it's on the calendar. You're going to tell me <laughs> that I put it on my calendar. I've added it. Uh, early American cookbooks with archivist Kira, mm -hmm. um, likely to take place on December 18th. Okay. I see. I see. And that would be neat. And that would year. be cool. So I'm going to assume we're going to run with that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So um, next week, right here, is another episode <laughs> that I have titled Sam Moskowitz's 1940 Classics of Science Fiction, Part 1. Uh, we'll learn who Sam Moskowitz is. Mm. Uh, but we've we've talked about him before. There was um, in 
a letter to the editor in one of the sci-fi magazines that we looked at previously, Sam Moskowitz had penned a letter to the editor um, that mentioned like the already classic stories that had appeared previously in Astounding Science Fiction. Um, and so I had said on stream that we would need to take a look at those. And so that's what we're going to start next week, is we're going to start uh, looking at the stories that Sam Moskowitz cited as being classics of science fiction that had previously been published in Astounding Science Fiction and edited by the guy that... Uh, anyway, how I got the list, <laughs> we'll cover again next week, but um, that's where the source of inspiration was from. Uh, and so that's coming up next week. And after that, I honestly have no idea because... I I don't have a Sterling anymore to help um, with picking topics, and I haven't had a chance yet. So, oh, you may get something that I just walk out, grab a box off the shelf, and say, okay. Ooh, that could be dangerous. We're going to do this, which mm -hmm. I've done before. We'll see. Um, but, but yeah, so there will Don't be worry, more Chad, episodes to Don't worry, I'll plant a come. good box for, for, I'll plant a good <laughs> box somewhere. I'll just leave it outside your office door like a gift. I'm totally open to suggestions or, you know, just randomly <laughs> leaving things outside my office door, um, like a cat dropping off the mouse it's been playing oh, with. Well, the mouse um, is not here. So. Uh, but, um, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna raid and... As always, it has been fun to be here and talk about food stuff. Uh, and I'll definitely work on something for December, yeah. I'm very happy that um, that I can have people come on and talk about the things. Also, I did ask for jazz music specifically to set our mid-century theme today. Uh, does this box <laughs> contain a... Yeah. Yes. But I have to leave the box taped up and then be back in my office to see the box get opened if it contained a bobcat. I mean, I think the answer is yes. Yeah, it's Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's cat, bobcat. Well, because you never know what you're going to discover when you open an unprocessed box of archives. I didn't say I'm going to leave you an unprocessed one. <laughs> I might leave you a processed one. <laughs> Matt, thank you. Uh, we... we I enjoy it, and I definitely enjoy having somebody come on who actually knows lots of stuff about the materials. Because usually it's me discovering things and seeing them for the first time, and then we learn about them together, and um, I can speculate, and we can poke around and try to find concrete answers. But having somebody come on who actually knows the material um, just shakes things up a little bit. And then I can stare at everything and just be like, uh, completely open-mouthed and dumbfounded by what there is. Also, I will say Key Squared, I'm teaching a class next week, which is a history class, but it's all about animals in North America. So now I feel like I have to go find a document that has something bobcat related that I could A, use in that class and B, leave, <laughs> that leave out for a future stream. Just <laughs> remind me that in uh, three weeks, on the 11th of September, there will not be a stream um, because I'm teaching a class. So <laughs> it is teaching time for, for those of us who are archivists in academia. So many classes. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna um, we're gonna raid over to Stephen Joy's, um, a streamer that I quite enjoy. Wonderful streamer, wonderful community. Um, wears tiny hats, makes tiny hats. If you want to see a tiny hat, ask for a tiny hat. Um, uh, Stephen Joyce is a wonderful streamer, and um, I like to raid over there when I can. So we're going to pop on over there. It looks like he is currently playing uh, uh, Mika and the Witch's Mountain, or Micah and the Witch's Mountain. Uh, so we're going to pop on over there. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for joining. Hopefully I will see you again soon. Um, we'll definitely see Kira again in the future, uh, but until I see you next, keep exploring history, everyone. Mm -hmm.